Bonjour, hello, welcome to Max Mountain World. Bonjour, hello, and today, just over three weeks into the, the lockdown, but I am allowed out to walk. I can go up to a kilometre away from my lodgement. I can go out for up to an hour, as long as it's written. And I've written one of these bits of paper things that I'm carrying around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tour of the station, 1800, Lazar 1800, just see what there is. I've not been out and not done this for a long time. Yes, I've driven it, um, but let's just go and have a look. So here's a video, just out for a walk. As you probably noticed with the start of this, I went through <laughs> past the no entry sign. I'm going the other opposite way around a one-way system at the top of the village here. And normally down here, in winter, you can't actually see that wall for snow and it is more or less north facing which is why there's still a little bit of snow left at the bottom of the corner there so uh, I'll just stop for the obligatory view tour this mountain above here in winter every time it snows someone puts a set of marks on it I'm led to believe it's instructors who take it in turns to drive uh, snowmobiles up there and uh, the mountain opposite huge cliffs across the left here uh, just below that, that forest above. We're just heading round to below here and down the bottom here, I'll zoom in a little bit and uh, we can just make out Ombrang, the village at the bottom which is about a kilometre in altitude, thousand metres below us here and in the background we have uh, the Park des Ekran uh, and over to the right, up the back, the other side uh, would be uh, Puy Saint Vincent, and we can't see it from here for these trees. But over to the right there, we then go over to Sarsha Valley Valley, uh, with Mont Genève over to the right behind an Italy border up in Mont Genève. So that's the obligatory view. What a beautiful day! And notice the sky. Now, I've now lost any point of reference, so I'll catch a tree or whatever, and you can see that there's just no trace of any planes anywhere at all. It's just beautiful. The last time I saw this, the sky like this, was after the volcano that erupted in Iceland. And it's just nothing, nothing in the sky. A beautiful, clear sky. Just look at that for two seconds. Wow! Back over to, to the mountain behind here to the what would that be? That'd be the southwest of us, I would say. Um, you can see all these little valleys, couloirs, whatever. And if I zoom in, you'll see the bits where there's sort of been many avalanches and stuff. A couple of years ago, um, just up up here, there was a huge avalanche that I'll follow down the route it took. It actually took down to there. If you go in centre of the screen here and it went down there and it came and actually stopped just down below us uh, behind here which is only about 100 meters away from here and probably about 100 meters lower it destroyed I would say hundreds of trees possibly even thousands I've done a, I did a walk in the summer afterwards and it was just incredible the destruction that it did Forgive me if it's a bit of wind noise, I'm trying to protect the camera's mic from it. But just to see, there's still bits and pieces of snow left, but there's a lot of flowers coming out. And if I just zoom in in there, I, I haven't a clue about flowers. I do have someone that subscribes to me that's kept me, kept me up to speed on a lot of this stuff. I don't know what they are. But nice to see the colours of these, it's just beautiful. Oh, a bit over zoomed. Just at the side of the road, this is a very recent melt of snow and you can see where the snow has actually crushed and dragged the old grasses down and in a very short period of time that's going to grow and overgrow again. And you can just see the, the station up behind us there. A few buildings down the bottom here, the, these are the furthermost down this side. So I just came the, the wrong way, obviously it doesn't matter on foot, down this road, that's uh, these other same buildings, the furthermost down this side, 
and just coming down the one-way system, the wrong way. <laughs> oh, we've got someone. There's quite a lot of people still working, quite a few vans still going about. Let's see if there's someone I know. Hey, hello. <laughs> yeah. And I know most of the people that come and go around here. It's, it's a really friendly place. And of course, you come up here, you're faced with a junction, and it's well signalled exactly where everything is. Although people still do tend to get very, very lost. So I'm just heading back up and round to the north side. You see there's a lot of the trees are still very brown and grey from, uh, from, from the winter. And a few animals about. See if I can catch this guy. He's a bit bored, I think. And just a little bit further on, let's have a wee closer look at this beautiful, beautiful mountain that keeps its snow well into summer normally. Just beautiful. And it's huge. Camera just doesn't do this justice at all. I'm trying to keep a steady hand here. Absolutely lovely. And of course, just to give reference, just coming in on the right there is the, the zone that I explained at Avalanche a couple of years ago. Out of sight from where I first mentioned this as well. Here's a bit more obvious where there's been sort of avalanches up there. Not a place where humans normally go, especially in winter. But you can see where the, the snow's slipped. And then just below, you can see this is the, the road that comes up from the bottom here, so runs around there, round to a hairpin bend, goes further down, another hairpin bend, another hairpin bend, <laughs> and just disappears away down there. And a slightly better view of Ombran down the bottom. A lot of greenery appearing now as well. And just coming up the road here up to this is more or less the north side of the Zor 1800 where we can see through the trees here the Zor 1650 and all the the chalets and stuff that are scattered about around about and below it and uh, just to head further round and we have this, the ski area, which basically is the forest up round here in the forest. And it goes up over the top, a valley up there, a valley up there, and another one to the right. And uh, looks virtually untouched, surprise, surprise. And there is one run, Grand Caban, that heads right round there and comes back into the top of the top station here. Just to get a dimension on the previous part of this video. That's where it is. I'm getting attacked by flies here. It's very early for the flies to come here. Normally it's just uh, midway to the end of June and July. So up on the left here is a zone which is sort of known as, a, as an avalanche zone. I have skied across that a couple of times, over that ridge on the left, down the other side, through the forest, slightly off piste at what they call back country ended up away down the bottom here and got the bus back up and the main car park area for Lazor 1800 the back end of the main place with all the commerce is all behind there you can see steps through here steps through there the road up which if I was to walk up there would be con against the the the, the, contra the one way system Virtually no vehicles here, but just a few folk that are obviously working, doing repairs or doing whatever. Further over to the far side of the car park, and this is a, a main piece down. And this chair left directly in front of us. Uh, many of my skiing videos start off with me doing an intro on that uh, chair lift and then heading away up. 
So the bridge, this is a pathway that you can walk down and walk down past the um, the weather station, the Maison de Meteo, and you can, it's about a five, ten minute walk down to the 1650 main station. So just heading up into the main square here, which normally today would be heaving, there would be tables out, there would be people drinking, eating, but there's nothing, everything's closed. Bars, shops, everything's all closed, just water dripping off the melting snow. We just head through the tunnel here to the bottom of the, the ski pistes and the chairlift, which is due to disappear and get replaced before next winter. That should be interesting to watch these works happening various residences and of course everything closed sad 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 not much snow left as well so this is a kiddies jump platform here which they couldn't remove because the the snow iced up and got too heavy they, they've had to wait until the snow's melted I reckon that'll disappear in the next week or two or maybe not people are probably barred from working and the snow in a very, very miserable state. So this is the main street where I actually started my walk this time, up the left there. And... Yeah, the foot of the piste, as they call it in French. The fond de piste. And I'm going to take a little wander up there. It's just amazing how quickly this is melting. I mean, at the moment it's... 16 degrees and it's uh, half past two in the afternoon but walk on it very crystalline and the slushy below icy as well it's uh, quite pleasant to walk on actually in this state when it goes really hard it's, it's dangerous to walk on but you can see someone's been up here already footprints in the snow so up behind this residence here we have the the kiddies area with a little uh, magic carpet uh, uh, lift it's not really a lift they stand on it and it just basically scoots them up and another residence behind with some chalets behind and the Grand Caban uh, piece that comes right around the back of the mountain actually comes out just behind these chalets to the left of us here. So I've just walked pa uh, around this lift and the Preclo lift, it's a four-seater uh, permanently fixed to the wire, these, these uh, chairs. Um, zoom in again and hopefully we can catch one of the chairs. It's very difficult in this light to actually work with the viewfinder and it's supposed to be getting replaced with a four-seater detachable or debrayable in French uh, which is going to leave the same place and I'm not sure of the exact situation but it's going to go up the same way and perhaps even a wee bit higher I don't know. Bit of a closer look at the, the kiddie area as well uh, which is called the Jardin de Neige, the snow garden zoom away and you can see what that's about and this thing on the left here is where they stand and it's just a, a, a sort of escalator thing that goes goes up takes them up to the top just a little look down where I've come from the chairlift I came through the tunnel down the bottom there through the other side and these trees are the ones at the side of the road at the other side of the car park just off to the left of this head here at the other side over to the right beyond the chairlift the piece that skis that you can ski down to the main station down that's that one as well and this button toe which is right in front of us here is quite often a good shortcut to be able to leave and then just ski down and catch the main chairlifts out of the main station you can see up above where the very top of the ski area is well it's not the very top there's a little bit behind it that goes a couple of hundred meters higher that's where the, the Zenith restaurant is, the subject again of many videos I've done. So we have these chalets, demi-chalets, half-chalets they call them. 
and that's the very top of the Lizor 1800 and uh, very southernmost just down beyond the ones on the left there is uh, where I started this walk and basically I went right round the back underneath round and yeah I've already explained that one again quick view check the Parc des Ecrans what a beautiful place the snow of course over there is a lot higher the snow line than here because it's uh, more or less south facing it gets more sun and just behind these chalets over here that's where the Grand Caban run comes out and then rejoins the the rest of the pistes in the main ski area so quite a quite a fascinating run really you can ski from the very top of the station via that all the way down to the very bottom and down to um, the, the car parking the daily car parking area and in so doing you can drop the better part of 1150 almost 1200 meters in altitude in one ski run and I think the quoted distance is about nine kilometers which is pretty long to do in one run at the very foot of the piece is one of the swimming pools for the residences. There's five swimming pools up in Lazar 1800 in total, all uh, individually associated with their own residences. Oops, I missed one. There's actually six. <laughs> so up behind here, you can just see a machine in, in the left here, yellow machine. That's where all the equipment is the, the, for the piece stairs. The, the mechanics all work up there. This is all the workshop area, or one of, the, there's uh, there's more down in the bottom station and stuff, but this is the, one of the main ones. And I'll take a trip up there. I don't really need to. I don't really want to. I'm not supposed to, I don't think. So these uh, indoor swimming pools, they have to keep the ventilation systems running to stop uh, humidity problems in the building. So just heading back down to where I started the walk and see these dishes everywhere. Virtually all of uh, France's television is done by dish now, by uh, satellite. Yeah, there's no sort of terrain, there's no ground uh, based television transmitters, everything's done with these. And just looking back down there's the office tourism centre screen. Again, electrics buzzing away, stuff has to keep keep going before it self-destructs. And down to the, the no entry signs where I went against the flow and started my walk. And most of these buildings around here are about 12, 13, 14 years old. And some of them you can see here have managed to maintain the beautiful colour of, of wood. I don't know if that's local wood or if it's imported or bought in or whatever, but it's quite often you can see that um, the, the wood and it's subject to a lot of weather, snow, sun, rain, it, it can turn this horrible black colour. And when it rains, that black colour kind of amplifies. It uh, turns horrible. But this, this building here, I've never actually noticed that before, is actually kept its colour beautifully quite a nice contrast there when you look to the, the view behind. The start point of my walk and just up the left here you can see up behind here is the the buildings the workshops and stuff uh, which is actually marked up with a sign forbidden to go in there ateliers which is French for workshops. These movable wooden barriers are, are normally placed as dozens of them spot about they've parked them there uh, but on season in summer and in winter, they'll have these just inside each side of the, the road in and the road through so that they have places where people can offload at the side without blocking the roads and stuff. It's incredible just how much inconsiderate parking occurs otherwise. It's, uh, so that, that's my tour of uh, Lazor 1800 or the tour around the outside and a bit of inside. I didn't want to really hit too much snow, I wanted to keep mostly to to the pistes and the, the roads, the, the marked tracks and roads and things, just from a safety point of view. And you can see down, this is just where I turned up to come back up the north side of the village.
Another quick look up behind. This is just where I walked in at the side here, and you can see all the the pieces up the side here, the other valley over to the left there, that avalanche zone, and the place where I said I'd skied over that time. And just make out the 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 new lift, the peak vert lift, if I can correctly find this. Yeah, and that's the top of it there. So. There's word is that there's going to be a restaurant built up there before next winter as well. That should be interesting to watch and follow. So uh, so that's it. Out for an hour's walk. I thought it would take just about an hour. It took me 50 minutes. That's not bad at all. So there we have it. That's uh, a quick tour around the top station. One of my more enjoyable works walks under the the circumstances. I've been to a lot more, very, very much more interesting places, but for today I don't think that's allowed. It's not allowed to go up the mountain and stuff. So uh, really that's, uh, I've really, really enjoyed that. And taking the camera around and really enjoy sharing these experiences with uh, my YouTube channel. So if you like this one, uh, give it the thumbs up on, on the, the thumbs up thingy down there. Dislike it if you want. Every bit of feedback is very much appreciated. Make comments, share it with people, and don't forget you can subscribe down there. You can click the alert bell afterwards and click on all and you'll be notified of uh, future uploads from Max Mountain World. So until the next video, ciao.